I think we're live. Let's uh, double check. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the shop. Just gonna tweet out that we are live, if I can. Should be public. Yes. Keep it a few minutes, let people join. Hey, there's everybody. Welcome to the stream, guys. How's it going? Happy Mother's Day. Give me just a minute, I'm just tweeting out the stream link. You guys have a good week. Everybody hear me okay in, st in stream? Let me know if everything is good as far as audio and video. We all good? Everybody surviving the uh, lockdown? Things starting to open up in some places. Building some... Planter boxes. Sorry for all you guys that joined early. I'm just kind of waiting for the stream to kind of catch up. I don't want to have to keep everybody up. All right, awesome, Justin. Sounds good. Why is this not named Morning Wood? That's all I wanted to know. Uh, so oh, that's a good point. I'm sorry. It totally should. Maybe I'll have a weekday version of it that's called that. But I still work, so I don't have time for that kind of thing. <laughs> good suggestion, though, Jonathan. All right, so welcome to the stream, everybody. I uh, appreciate you joining. Please make sure you like so that uh, this gets out to everybody subscribe so they can see the stream. Uh, I just started streaming a couple weeks ago, so I don't know how this whole YouTube algorithm thing works with free stuff. Surviving, not exactly thriving, Tater. Uh, yeah, just doing the best we can, right? It is what it is. Um, so welcome to Morning Mo and Joe. Uh, I didn't mow my yard this morning because it's Mother's Day. I hope you guys remember that. If you have a mother in your life, make sure you're doing something nice for her today. Um, we are going to do something on stream nice for my wife. Uh, I've been building her some cedar raised planters, and I've got some scrap wood from that, some off cuts, and I'm going to use these to make a little hanging planter box. So uh, stick around if you want to see me do that. That's going to be just a minute. Um, but yeah, make sure you do something nice for the mothers in your life. Uh, they birthed you or they birthed your children. Either way, very important. Make sure you take care of them. Um, yes, yeah, so I didn't mow this morning. I was making some French toast, coffee, and mimosas. I feel like I should have mimosas out here. It's only appropriate for Mother's Day, but, you know, whatever. There's power tools, so it's not a good idea. My wife would not like it if I had mimosas while I handled my table saw, so we won't do that. Um, did you say planter boxes? Yes, Tater. I am making some uh, window planter boxes. Uh, I already made raised beds. They're right out there. That'll be the video release, hopefully, in the next week. Um, and the offcuts from that, are we're going to make some uh, window boxes, window planter boxes, um, that I'm going to hang on the trellis that I made over there. Um, I think I have enough scrap aluminum to make the hangers, too, but if not, I'll... Share some on Instagram or whatever about making those planters. Um, so yeah, I'm Rick, uh, Woodwork Life. Uh, I make woodworking videos. 
This is the live stream for the for Sunday mornings. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., uh, we meet for about an hour. It's probably going to be a short one today because it is Mother's Day. Um, right after I get done with my yard work usually, and we just hang out. Uh, I kind of share the uh, projects of the week, so stuff that I've seen on Instagram, which, of course, this morning I haven't had any time to prep for, but we'll go and explore together and see if we find some cool stuff. We'll call it the Creators of the Week from YouTube, and we'll also build a quick project. Um, and then I'll take some Q&A at the end. I have a couple questions from Instagram from earlier in the week uh, that I'll make sure I answer. Uh, I don't have any from you guys on YouTube, so think of some good questions. I'll try to catch them in chat. Um, 30 FPS, 720p, sorry, Tater. Buffering might consider reducing your stream rate to 720p. I could try, let's see what we got. Change settings on the fly. I will try changing to 720p. Oh, okay, yeah. I was like, okay, I thought I had this this video thing take, taken care of. It's afternoon here in the UK. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's my morning. Uh, it's got to be morning somewhere at some point. But yeah, I appreciate it in the UK. It's what? Uh, three? I don't know. I work with people in the UK during the week, but I forget what time it is. Anyways, we're so today we're going to be going through. First thing we're going to do is we're going to build those planter boxes. Um, then we're going to go through and check out Creators of the Week on Instagram and YouTube, and then we're going to take that Q&A. So get those questions ready. That'll be at the end of the stream, probably about 30 minutes, but we'll go ahead and jump into it. Um, so today we're going to be building the planter boxes. I've got some 1x6 uh, pine, uh, not pine, one by six cedar that's leftover offcuts from the raised gardens that I built. Um, I, I'm going to build some really simple planter boxes. Uh, you can build them with better joinery. You can build them so where they last longer. But honestly, planter boxes are th so easy to just slap together um, that it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, the first thing, I want to make the longest one I can out of what I've got in scrap here. So I'll pick the couple longest pieces of scrap, make them to the same length. And then I'll use the shortest pieces of scrap that I have, which are these, to make the ends. So the plan is to have sort of one flat piece that goes against the window or the trellis or whatever. And then one slanted out piece so that everything can kind of spill over. These are good for like herbs and whatnot. So the really only challenge is to figure out what angle we want to cut that pizza wedge at to join these sides together. And then you also have a matching face edge on the bottom piece that goes with these. So I actually need three pieces this width. Let's see if we got another one. Oh, winner, winner. All right, so we've got three pieces that size. Those are going to be our front, bottom, and back. So we'll get after that now. Let me set up a camera so you can see my chop saw. Oh, move you just a little bit. Hoping that didn't break anything. All right, so this is my chop saw. I like to use my chop saw like totally cordless. Um, if you have the ability, uh, it's a really nice thing. Um, this is the Makita cordless chop saw. It's a 10 inch model. Pretty much big enough for anything that I need to do, but uh, totally understand if you do a lot of like heavy cutting, if you need something more heavy duty. But this thing, I've cut white oak with it. I've cut Osage with it. I've cut two by fours or four by fours. I've cut four by sixes. Uh, it does a good job. Um, so I like it just enough. And then I've got this little cordless vacuum underneath to do dust collection. I'm not going to get my ear protection. So real quick, I'm just going to cut all these square on both ends. Try to remove as little material as possible. Okay. 
Another thing I really like about this saw is it's got this big mouth for dust collection here at the front, but then it also has a separate hose that goes and collects dust at the blades. So it's a lot, there's no, no miter saw that has perfect dust collection. I've heard people talk about the Capex, but this one's pretty good at least. And for pff, half the price of the Festool. And it's cordless. All good. All right, the next step is going to be to cut those little pizza wedges. Let me get the camera set up. Sorry, camera, camera work on the fly. Everything's still good in chat? All right, next thing is gonna be cut those pizza wedges. So I've got this figured out. Get this cleaned up. And what I'm, the way I'm gonna do that, I'm going to cut two of these. No, just one of them. I'm gonna cut these with the miter saw real quick. I'm gonna square off one end and then I'm gonna cut it. No, that's not the best way to do it. I think I can do it better, easier. So I'm just gonna use my miter. Yeah. I'm gonna cut off one square end, get rid of this split piece here. And we'll go from there. I've got my dust collection control right off here to the side. Set it to, what do we think? What do we think for that offset, like 15 degrees? Maybe 20? Let's try 20. I think 20 will work. 20 degrees. Yeah, that looks good. Let's do 20. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut 120 degree angle and then since I'm kind of running on the fly, I'm just gonna cut the other end to match that. I'll probably do that over at the miter socks with a small piece of that set at that point. How big do I want the bottom? That looks good. <laughs> All right, see, I cut the 120 degree angle and now I can just cut a duplicate piece right here. And I'll do that with the miter saw so it's a little bit safer. So when I'm marking this, the line that I'm marking will be, I want to remove because that way they're, they're matching. Since I'm tracing the other piece, quick like frame of reference when you're tracing the other piece, that line you draw, that's gonna be where you cut, so. I'll do it real quick. I'm not the camera. Sorry, guys. All right, so I cut those both flush. Now we have two perfectly matching pieces. Uh, so these will be our sides. So they'll go right here. Oh, they're a little bit long because of that. We'll cut those down. Oops. Well, these are bowed just a bit, but whatever. All right, so by cutting that angle, 
now that length is longer than the five and a half inches. So I'm gonna mark, remove here. And then I can go do that over at the miter saw. This is pretty crude, but should be pretty quick. And when I'm making cuts like this, they need to match one. And then your finger can actually detect it down to like a thousandth in differences. So I'll usually just make sure they're flush using my finger. And then go cut them real quick. should have perfectly fitting pieces. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so I cut the 20 degrees there on the bottom. Um, now on our last long piece, because we have three, wherever they went, right here. Got our three long pieces to be cut to this bottom dimension. So this bottom dimension is gonna be whatever this is across, and then it's gonna have a 20 degree bevel on one side. So we're gonna set our blade to 20 degrees and that will cut our bevel. We'll use the piece to set the length. All right, so we need to go to 20 degrees. Unlock that. Winsky. All right. So we have 20 degrees now. These blade guards do work at an angle like this. I just don't like them for whatever reason. And, um, so we'll take this blade guard out. And then I take the blade guard out because it's at an angle. So I'll change that. Fortunately, this Laguna saw, it's very quick to change the blade. The blade guard, that is. The blade's the same as any other saw. But I'll still use a riving knife. Just got the regular riving knife without the overarm dust collection. So you'll see how much of a difference that overarm dust collection makes. go back to 20 degrees. It's like the setting isn't quite 20 degrees, so we'll go to the actual angle. There we go. Lock that down. And then since this wedge is gonna offset that middle piece here, we know exactly where we need to set our fence. We'll just set our fence to that distance right there. Boom. Now we'll have a perfectly fitting bottom piece. Which piece do I want to be the bottom? This one has a little split in it, so we'll use this one. Try to see if we can cut off a split. Yep, we can, perfect. Ear protection. And we'll cut this off. Get our push stick ready. Dust collection on. Now we've got a perfectly fitting bottom piece as well. You can see, since we match that angle, that it fits in perfectly. There we go. So now we need to glue and nail this together. Hi.
All right, glue, glue, glue. Um, so this is going on an outdoor project. Do I have any type on two? Is this stuff any better? Okay. So I use this uh, Gorilla Wood glue. Uh, this stuff here is water resistant, so that'll work a little better for this setup. Hey, what's up, Shaq? How you doing, man? Welcome to the stream. This is what I do on Sunday mornings. Shaq works with me in my day job. Hopefully he doesn't get me fired. I'm going to change to shorter pins, which I hope I still have, for doing the glue up. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, I got some smaller ones. Too short? Yeah, probably. I got a little bit longer ones. There we go. All right, I'm doing looks like inch and a half brad nails to do all the joinery along with the. Hey, what's going on? All right. Got my already. Okay, got plenty of hose. All right, I'm going to set up a little glue up station here on my outfeed table. All right, got that. Get all my pieces. There, that's fine. All right, so I got bottom, one side, other side. Boom, boom. All right, so we'll make our easiest joint first, which is going to be this back panel. Perfect. Okay. So, you guys see okay over here? Now nah, let me readjust you. All right. Uh, there's my little glue up station. All right. So I'm going to start on the back because this is the simplest. Right out. No. Caps all right out. Anyway, always having glue issues on the stream, huh? All right, we'll just put a quick bead here on the back. This isn't going to be like a perfect joint, but it should hold up okay. All right. And then we'll just drive a few pins from the back side here, pre brads from the back side here to join. So just, just really doesn't work as a clamp. Hopefully the glue will do most of the work.
All right, so we got our back panel on, square, but the side connectors will help square that up. Oh, fuck. Sorry, didn't mean to cuss on stream. Let's put a little glue on there. Oops. Put a little bit of glue on this front piece there to join the face. Got it. And we'll put this piece right here. And again, we'll attach it with some brads. Although we're at an angle, we still want to go straight in. So we'll just drive those straight. All right, so now we've got sort of our cradle, right? Now we just need to attach these two side pieces here. So we'll lather those up with glue. And this will go on this side. I'm trying to keep all the rough faces of the cedar out. I just like that look of that rough cedar. Um, I think it weathers better too. There's that. Boom, boom, boom. Put this first one in. Ooh, why? Okay, I see what I did there. I did something. I did something wrong. That's too narrow. All right, I got to recut these. Fortunately, I got extra wood. Okay, so what I did is I cut these like they were going all the way to the bottom, in which case they would have been fine. But you can see since I cut them this way, I cut them too uh, short. So I need to cut new ones. Fortunately, I got a lot, so that's no big deal. It makes it a little more difficult because before I was just going to a random measurement and now I'm going to have to go to the actual measurements on me, but such as building on stream. Cut this long so it will fit. Gives me plenty of extra length. <laughs> now I'm just going to use the actual measurements here to fit that. Ooh, wow, I just barely cut it to the right length. Okay, so now that matches the angle. And we'll just cut that off over at the chop saw. Okay, and then we'll cut it, just this top piece off. So it's flush. Easy fix. Cool. Uh, 
Okay, but it's not going to be square because this one's a little shorter than that one. So we'll just do that with a hand plane when we're done. Uh, let me get the other piece cut to that size. Here, I'll show you my miter saw set up again. Two matching pieces. Oop. Pickle these in. What's up, Fox Hall? <laughs> Morning wood. Yeah, I could have cut off. No, that wouldn't have worked. Cutting off the si what, bottoms of the side panels. Yeah, that could have worked, but eh. This will be shorter than the actual length. I don't understand what that means, but appreciate the point. So usually when I'm working with projects like this, especially when it's just kind of like going as I go, going with the flow, um, I'm not particularly trying to hit particular measurements. I'm just trying to make something that goes together. Um, I usually, like if I have a, a video that I'll share like on my actual channel, it's usually better thought out design than this. This is just kind of a quick project. I um, just want to make sure that I'm getting the minimum waste out of the material, uh, the, out of the scrap materials that I have. And that the final product is more um, pragmatic, is that the word? No, utilitarian. Utilitarian. So like when I'm making stuff like the units behind me, or when I'm making stuff like, like that, that's just like pragmatic applications. Front panel. Back panel, and we'll touch the bottom. All right, one side. And then we'll get the other side, which is not this one, it's this new one. Got it. Uh, I don't normally use glue bottles like a caveman like this, um, but for some reason, every time on stream I try to use a glue bottle, the proper delivery method of that glue bottle doesn't work. Does anyone have a glue bottle that just doesn't dry out? Or is it just me being lazy and not putting caps on right? Probably that. There's the other side in. Come out. <laughs> Just tap one in the front here. 
one into the side. Sorry, my compressor's really loud. I need a new one, a bigger one. We'll handle that another time. All right, so this isn't gonna be like a watertight box, but it's not supposed to be. I need to clamp this up a little bit just so that everything sits flush and hopefully that glue dries a little better. Let me grab a clamp. Just a couple small ones should do it. I'm most concerned with the side-to-side -side strength, so... That I'll do that, and that... This one I'll do this. To give those nails a little bit of help. One more clamp over here. Ooh, this is very greasy. I don't know why. There we go. All right, so we'll let that dry for a little bit. Let's see what kind of angle you guys have. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just with a sharp plane, uh, just a block plane, I'm gonna just even out these top parts here. So, see what's going on here. So I'm just gonna be, this is cedar, so it works with hand tools like nobody's business. So I'm just gonna even it out with the block plane. I'll take some thicker shavings even with this thing. take some lighter shavings to smooth it out. And I'm going against the grain right now, so I'll flip it around for smoothing it out. passes there. Boom. One side done. Knock the other side out real quick. You could have easily done this at the saw if you described that line or whatever, but with cedar, it's so easy with hand tools. You might as well just do it this way. It's just as quick. Once you get a little workout and you get your hand tools out. So 
Sorry. I'm trying not to sound like I'm huffing and puffing. But I am very out of shape. I don't know about you guys. You guys getting out much? I've been stuck in the house either working or teaching my kids. I have not gotten to work out at all during this whole lockdown. I got on a bike ride. I went on one nice bike ride. Probably some of my own fault. I think it's just some mental. It's not feeling like it's okay to leave. Kind of makes it harder to get out of the house, but I haven't been very active, that's for sure. And I haven't checked the comments yet, so you guys will have to let me know if you see my mom jump in here. Because I should probably tell her Happy Mother's Day, too. I haven't called her yet. I feel bad. I'll call her soon. Almost there. Thick shavings. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let that glue dry for a little bit on that. And I think you can you can buy hooks, but I've got <sighs> Woo. You can buy hooks to hang that onto uh, the uh, the trellis that I made, um, but I think I'm probably at some point, I've got this aluminum bar stock. I'm probably just going to bend this. It's pretty flexible. I'll bend this, just uh, cold bend it into some uh, little hooks that I'll attach, attach to the back. Those just hang over my trellis, and then that will that so i'll let that dry that's enough for the project for today though um let's zoom you guys back out see what kind of time we have left it's 10 46 and i said i wasn't going to go long so i don't want to hold any of you guys away from your wives slash mothers <sighs> so we'll go ahead and get into the q a then um i will share my makers of the week via the comments below or via the, the description of this video. So sorry, I always like to make sure I reach out across people in the community in these videos and share people that have made cool things. Um, so I'll make sure I do that in the description today. Um, but we'll jump into the Q&A. Does anyone have any questions? And if we don't, then I will end early. But otherwise, feel free, ask me anything you got. I'm going to go into Instagram questions while you guys think of yours. <sighs> it's important, Fox. That's this is you want to be maker of the week, Fox Hall. Everybody go check out Fox Hall Woodworks. So he made the plans for my, uh, uh, my bunk bed build video um, along with me. Uh, he also made an amazing, let me see if I can share it. Fox, I'll send me the link. Um, send me the link for your, uh, your flip top CNC, uh, your flip top CNC table that you made. Uh, dude, coffee makes, dust makes coffee better. You don't want to keep it covered. It's just a little bit extra grain, you know? Mm. Cedary. Let me jump on Fox Hall's channel real quick. Or it wasn't on your, tube, your channel, was it, Fox Hall? Uh, but Fox Hall made this awesome flip top, um, YouTube, flip top CNC station that would have been like assembly table and a great like CNC station. Shut up. Um, flip. Top CNC table. It's actually, it's on 
Is this it, Ryan Gretlins? Yeah, this is it. Let me share this with you guys. Um, sorry, I was trying to pull. the other one there's some cool stuff though yeah he also edited that video so it was it was awesome um, whose channel is a must watch for me um, I watch a lot of Peter McKinnon because I'm really into video production uh, if you haven't noticed uh, I did the talk for the last two years at uh, workbench con um, I also watch basically everything that Mark Spagnuolo or uh, Matt Cremona do. So follow Mark Spagnuolo and Matt Cremona. They're really, really talented. Um, lately, I've been getting a lot into, uh, and I suddenly forgot his name because that's how it goes when you try to say things. Um, Mike Farrington. Uh, check out Mike Farrington's channel. I had an honor to talk to him uh, at uh, WorkbenchCon. He's a very talented cabinet maker. And uh, if you like cabinetry and like want to understand some of the quick tricks around making like good cabinet joinery, uh, he's definitely a good guy to, guy to follow. Um, but yeah, Mike Farrington, Matt Cremona, Mark Spagnolo. Um, I also watch Peter McKinnon. That's basically what I watch on YouTube though. Um, how do I like the Laguna table saw? The dust collection is phenomenal. Uh, the accuracy is also great. Um, the cast iron tops are dead flat. Um, I have had some rust problems. I don't know why, but even when I wax the tabletop, I don't know if it's just the carbon content of it or what, but uh, the tabletop, I've had to re-wax it like four times already, and I've only had it for a couple months. Um, I like the capacity, the outfeed table is great, it's just enough without taking up too much shop space. Um, yeah, overall, the table saw. Uh, let me see if I can find these Instagram questions I had from earlier this week. I had a couple questions and I lost them. Where is it? Uh, does anybody else have any other questions? This is the F3. This is the, the big boy F3 saw. I don't know how to look. I'm, I'm, I'm a plebe when it comes to Instagram. But I swear I was trying to get people's questions. I don't know. There were questions on Instagram. I don't really understand how to use it. But anyways, it's uh, Mother's Day. I'm going to get back to my wife uh, and my mother-in-law that lives with us. And if she's watching the stream, happy Mother's Day, Mom. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Uh, if anyone's watching, I see a lot of guys' names, but who knows. 
Um, thanks for watching today. Uh, stay safe. Go grab yourself a cup of coffee. Do something nice for your mom today. Do something nice for your wife today for sure. Remember to keep your tools sharp and keep your mind sharper. Sorry to end this one short, but thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next week on Mo and Joe at 10 a.m. Central on Sunday. Talk to you then.